It's hard to believe that almost 20 years have passed since the end of what was to have been the surefire biggest storyline in wrestling history, WWE vs WCW. We won't go into the litany of reasons why this angle was bungled and botched, but instead we'll focus on the mass exodus of talent that flocked to WWE in the aftermath of the sale of WCW assets in March 2001. Listed within are 30 individuals who would migrate from the WCW wreckage into the WWE sanctum. The first 24 names had their contracts absorbed outright in April 2001, while the last 6 names would be acquired later on through specific negotiations. On the whole, even without megastars like Goldberg, Ric Flair, Scott Steiner and Sting, this is still an impressive group of names. Seeing them all will only further sadden you when you remember how the invasion went. Let's catch up with all 30 of these ex-WCW performers and see what became of each. Mason Ryan, Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra, Blaze, Norman Smiley, Zach Gowan, Bam Bam Bigelow. Ahmed Johnson, Tory Wilson, Buff, Bagwell, Robert Gibson, Dave Taylor, Terry Taylor and Godfathers, Holmes. Wayne Gill, Adam Bomb, Michael Hayes, Cor Von, S.A. Rios, Jim and I, the manager from Kai and Ty, Jim Powers, Francine, Jack Swagger, Mean Gene, Fatchick Thriller, Duke the Dumpster, Oklahoma Manta! What happened to that wrestler? Someone main eventing, which leaves me lamenting. What happened to that wrestler? Some since long forgotten, but their memories live on. Lance Storm. Storm appeared to be one of the aces of the forthcoming alliance, as his technical wrestling acumen and impressive agility could match him up well with a variety of WWE defenders. Most agree that Storm wasn't used at his optimum in WWE, retiring as a full-time wrestler in his mid-30s. Storm recently announced the closure of his training school in Calgary, the Storm Wrestling Academy, and is an informative podcast personality alongside Don Callis on Killing the Town. Shannon Moore Moore wasn't a participant in the actual invasion angle, instead being assigned to the Heartland Wrestling Association for further development. Moore would famously surface in the latter half of 2002 as Matt Hardy's Mattitude protege slash sacrificial lamb. Today at age 40, Moore still wrestles with frequency in the southeastern US and runs his own tattoo parlor, Gas Chamber Inc. in Carthage, North Carolina. Elix Skipper Skipper never made it into the invasion angle either, working in developmental before being released by the end of 2001. Primetime took his talents to TNA, where his mind-blowing athleticism was put on full display in both the X Division and tag team scenes as part of Triple X. Skipper retired in 2009 and is currently managing an Applebee's in Douglasville, Georgia. Alan Funk Add the former Kiwi to the list of those acquisitions that weren't on display in the Alliance. Funk was an early release following the absorption of talent contracts and would be visible in both World Wrestling All-Stars doing a Hulk Hogan impression and in the early days of TNA as Rainbow Express member Bruce. Funk's last matches of note were in 2011 for the Lucha Libre USA promotion. Chuck Palumbo the muscular, wild main Palumbo would defect to the WWE side at one point in the invasion and wound up forming a partnership with Billy Gunn that would gain considerable notoriety. Palumbo would then bounce around as both an FBI member and a sneering biker before parting ways with WWE in 2008. Palumbo last wrestled in 2012 and runs CP Customs, a business specializing in customization and repair for cars and motorcycles. The Wall a colossus at 6 foot 9 tall and over 300 pounds, the wall seemed just like the tower of power that WWE would covet, but was released early on due to reported personal issues. The wall would resurface at the onset of TNA as Malice, the centerpiece of Father Mitchell's Disciples of the New Church. In December 2003, one day after wrestling a match for All Japan, the real life Jerry Chute was found dead of a heart attack aged 36. Jason Jett Jet wrestled in ECW as Easy Money, jumped to WCW when ECW ceased running shows, and only got to enjoy a couple of months' work before WWE bought out the assets. Money was also a fixture in the early days of TNA following a WWE release, working in the promotion's X Division. Jet, whose last matches of record were in the fall of 2015, has also worked as a tailor, designing tights and boots for other wrestlers. Kaz Hayashi it's becoming a trend here as Hayashi was one of the early castaways of this group, though he would quickly re-establish himself in All Japan Pro Wrestling. There, Hayashi would enjoy a gold-filled 11-year stint with the promotion before leaving in 2013 after longtime friend Kaiji Muto had also departed. Hayashi would rejoin Muto in the Wrestle 1 promotion where he remains active today. 
Mike Sanders Above Average seemed to have a bright future ahead due to his natural charisma and his ability to play an effective heel, but would be released from WWE in mid-2002 during a long tenure in development. Sanders would play an integral part in Vince Russo's SEX stable in TNA, but would retire from wrestling in late 2005. Since 2013, Sanders has owned The Party Paramedic, a DJ and entertainment company that caters to parties in the Atlanta area. Doesn't that sound like fun? Mike Awesome The fearsome powerhouse that ran roughshod over Japan and ECW had a chance to shake off the scent of that 70s guy in WWE, but would disappear not long after winning the hardcore title. Awesome made his mark in places like TNA and the first run of MLW, as well as the original One Night Stand, but never wrestled after that. Awesome would sadly take his own life in February 2007 at the age of 42. Kid Romeo Romeo was being built up at the tail end of WCW and was paired with Skipper in the short-lived Cruiserweight Tag Team division, doing a Ricky Martin-inspired character. Romeo would be another early cut from WWE and instead plied his trade in places like TNA and Puerto Rico's World Wrestling Council. Romeo was working as an exterminator during a hiatus from the business in the mid-2000s and has seemingly not wrestled since 2008. Evan Courageous This soap opera actor and male model turned wrestler was the focal point of the three count group, but was the only one of the trio not to make a mark on WWE. Courageous would wrestle on an infrequent basis after being dropped from WWE Developmental in the fall of 2001, his last match of note taking place in 2010. According to his LinkedIn profile, Courageous now works as a tax preparer in Mount Holly, North Carolina. Jamie Noble The redneck messiah has had himself quite a career in wrestling since WCW's demise, winning gold in both WWE and Ring of Honor, the latter of which he briefly held the company's world title. Noble's last match as a full-time wrestler came in 2009, though he's gotten physical since as one of the pests from J&J &J Security. Noble remains working as a producer for WWE and makes occasional appearances on TV. Lash LaRue LaRue always stood out with his wild mane of carrot-coloured hair and his pronounced sideburns, but was unable to make headway in WWE, requesting his release from Developmental in mid-2002. LaRue would make several appearances in TNA on the company's secondary programming, as well as indie cards in Alabama and Georgia. LaRue has been retired since the mid-2000s, and today is a youth minister at the West Weaver Baptist Church in Weaver, Alabama. Reno the brawny Reno looked like a legit fighter, and he was. The muscle of the natural-born thrillers was a former kickboxer before getting into wrestling. His time in the business would be short, quietly retiring by the end of 2003. It's not clear what Reno is up to these days, though some sources note that he lives with family in Nevada. Mark Jindrak the athletic and muscular Jindrak was originally slated to be the fourth member of Evolution, before being replaced by Dave Batista. Jindrak would be used as a roster regular from 2003 to 2005, most visible as the reflection of perfection on SmackDown, managed by Teddy Long. Jindrak has since wrestled in promotions south of the border, including AAA and CMLL, under the name Marco Corleone, though departed the latter in the summer of 2018. Sean O'Hare the scowling, teeth-gnashing O'Hare more than looked the part of the next main event stud, like a demonic Drew McIntyre. An attempt to push him as a sinful instigator in 2003 would sadly fall short of its potential, and O'Hare would depart WWE in 2004. O'Hare took up mixed martial arts and kickboxing thereafter, and would sadly commit suicide in September 2014 at just 43 years of age. Johnny the Bull as Johnny Stamboli, the risk-taking brawler wouldn't materialize on WWE TV until the summer of 2002, becoming a fixture in the latter days of the hardcore title scene. Later on, Stamboli would kick around in the WWE version of the FBI and in TNA as the evil entity known as Relic. It's killer, spelled backwards, get it? Stamboli has not wrestled since 2014 and is now working as a mortgage loan officer. Hugh Morris Morris brought agility, brawniness, and manic energy to his performances, which carried carried over into the WWE, where he would mostly wrestle under the name Bill DeMott. DeMott would migrate into the role of trainer for a pair of stints, the latter of which ended in 2015 after resigning due to allegations of misconduct, which he denied. DeMott now runs the Kerry and DeMott Foundation, named after his daughter, who was killed by a drunk driver in late 2015. Sean Stasiak Stasiak joined WCW in 2000 after being released by WWE the prior year, and found second life in the Alliance as a hyper-aggressive putz whose attempts to blindside others would always go badly. After a brief repackage as the far-out planet Stasiak in 2002, he would be released once more, effectively ending his wrestling career. Stasiak has since worked as both a chiropractor and as a motivational speaker. 
Jimmy Yang Yang would have one of the more unusual WWE resumes, as he was absent during the invasion but would resurface later in two roles, as Akio, the suit-wearing henchman of Tajiri, and as Jimmy Wang Yang, insisting that he was a proud cowboy. Yang officially retired in 2016 after wrestling a sparse schedule for a few years and has worked as both an exterminator as well as the owner of his own party bus company. Stacy Keebler Few women in the history of professional wrestling have turned heads quite like the former Miss Hancock. WWE could always find use for Keebler, whether wrestling, as a valet, or otherwise, in her four and a half years with the company. Keebler left the business in 2006 to pursue acting and has become a mother of two. Shane Helms Sugar Shane would have to settle for his real first name of Gregory in WWE before happening upon the hurricane persona that would come to define his career. Helms would enjoy a near nine-year career in WWE, wrestling as both the cocksure superhero as well as a vicious cruiserweight under his real name. Helms is still active today, wrestling in places such as Ring of Honor, House of Hardcore, and even at All In in the Battle Royal on the Zero Hour pre-show. Chavo Guerrero Jr. Of those first 24 WCW acquisitions made, Guerrero would have the longest uninterrupted WWE tenure, lasting more than 10 years until his June 2011 release. In that time, Guerrero would reign multiple times as cruiserweight and tag team champion, most notably alongside Uncle Eddie. Guerrero is still active, wrestling for promotions such as Lucha Underground, and is also the fight coordinator for the Netflix series Glow. Buff Bagwell Bagwell would forever be linked to the rough start of WCW's occupation within WWE, having a match with Booker T in the Raw main event that was widely panned and booed out of the building. Bagwell was released one week later and would take to other promotions, including a few short stints in the early days of TNA. Bagwell still wrestles a bit on the indies and has also worked as a male escort, which was featured on the Showtime series Gigolos. I bloody love that show. Billy Kidman the popular high-flying standout wasn't highly visible during the invasion, but would be put to use in SmackDown's cruiserweight and tag team scenes from 2002 until 2005 when he was released from the company. Kidman retired as an in-ring performer in early 2008 while helping train wrestlers down in Florida Championship Wrestling. Since 2010, Kidman has served as a backstage producer with WWE. Tori Wilson Wilson was actually released from WCW in late 2000, but would join the invasion the following summer in an angle where she seduced Vince McMahon. Wilson spent most of her seven-year tenure with WWE as a babyface, generally getting the better of heel divas in various sensually-themed matches. Wilson has made occasional guest appearances with WWE in recent years, and now runs Tori Wilson Fit, an online fitness instruction and blog site. Chris Canyon Nobody was better than the self-professed Alliance MVP, a man with a thirst for wrestling creativity and an abundance of energy that was sadly underutilized in his WWE tenure. Canyon would come out as homosexual shortly after his WWE release and made several media appearances to discuss this revelation. Sadly, Canyon was plagued by mental health issues and had threatened suicide weeks before killing himself in April 2010 at the age of 40. Diamond Dallas Page Page was one of the few wrestlers willing to take a buyout of his AOL Time Warner contract and was put to work as the mysterious stalker of Undertaker's then-wife Sarah. DDP would be dominated in that one-sided feud and would later take on the role of a cheerful motivational speaker, which he portrayed before retiring in June 2002 due to neck injuries. Though he would wrestle sporadically after, Page would become more well-known for his famed DDP yoga program and for helping various individuals, including Scott Hall and Jake Roberts, turn their lives around. Page is only one of the two individuals on this list that would later be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. That said, maybe, just maybe, his wrestling career isn't over just yet. Booker T. And the other WWE Hall of Famer from this list would be the five-time, 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 five-time WCW champion himself, who would be thrust into the forefront of the invading WCW army. Booker would go on to enjoy a fruitful six-year career with the WWE, holding the World Heavyweight, Intercontinental, US, and multiple tag team titles, as well as winning the 2006 King of the Ring tournament. After a few years in TNA, Booker returned to WWE in 2011 as an announcer and occasional wrestler, and still pops up as a pre-show panelist. Today, Booker runs his own promotion, Reality of Wrestling, and hosts his own radio show, Heated Conversations. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter 
Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.